Hi everyone, I'm Anna, the Tech Fairy, here to sprinkle some digital glitter on your day. In this video, we will dive into a world of layers, API, API, and ISA. So if you're confused right now, it will all make sense by the end. It's like clearing the noise from your brain waves. Confusing at first, but stick with me and we'll turn that static into sweet, sweet understanding. Are you ready to geek out with me? Okay, let's go. So imagine this is our computer system and let's just divide it into two parts. So you have software on top and hardware on the bottom. The ISA is like the ultimate ultimate middle person between the hardware and software. It's on the processor what to do and how to do. It's the only way through which a user is able to interact with the hardware. It can be viewed as a programmer's manual because it's the portion of the machine that's visible to the programmer. In the computing world, we've got the system ISA. It's keeping things secure and stable down in the kernel, while the user ISA is the friendly face that apps see, letting them do their thing without breaking the system stride. Apps chat with the user ISA for their everyday needs, and then they sneak a peek into a system level secrets through, guess, 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 through clever system calls. It's bridging to the system ISA. And this operations ensures um, that everything runs smoothly and safely. Now think of API as a supercharged command center sitting on top of everything. They're like the magic ones that simplify the complex tasks of talking to hardware through the ISA. API offer high level commands neatly packed into uh, libraries making it very easy for developers. And it's also making software as portable as a pocket-sized computer. And now the ABI in the middle, it plays a matchmaker between the programs and the operating system. It's all about setting the rules for how programs should talk to the hardware using the ISA. So think of an API like the compiled version of an API. When you write source code, you access libraries through an API. But once your code is compiled, your application accesses the, live, the binary data in those libraries through the API. So just like an API, the API defines structures and methods for accessing these external libraries. But on a lower level, it uses a machine language level. ABIs ensures that even if you compile your code on one system, it can run smoothly on any other system that understands the same ABI, of course. It's like having a universal librarian who knows how to find and use resources in any library, no matter who created it. So no need for a code makeover every time you switch the system. ABI keeps everything running like a well-built machine. And now let's check out some examples to get a better idea on what the difference between each concept. First, I want to show you an example of REST API, which is a specialized type of API, but I still want to show it to you because it simplifies interactions by using standard HTTPPP methods. It's very straightforward and easy to understand. Let's look at this example first. These are the different methods that this API uses. Um, for example, you're creating your website that sells used cell phones. So you need to display a list of available cell phones on your website, right? Or you want to allow the owner to add to his inventory on this website or to search his inventory by ID number. In the backend application, you can use a list of dictionary to hold all your inventory. Um, but in the front end application, you can use like a post method to allow the owner to add to his inventory, or you can use this put method to update it. Get allows you to retrieve data simply by specifying a different ID number. And in order to fetch another object, you can always change this object ID number in your get request URL. We don't need to know how these methods work or how they operate, it's just the magic of API. Now let's look at the Google Maps example. 
Google Maps API is one of the most popular APIs. If we scroll down here, there is a list of different APIs that they have. Let's look at the map. And here is the Maps JavaScript API, which is available to use. For example, you want to add a map to your website so people could find your store, right? Here they have different tutorials that can help you do that. Let's look at the Add Google Map to a React app. This tutorial shows how to load the Maps JavaScript API. Let's just scroll down and it says you need to create your API key first and then let's head over to section four. Okay, so here they explain that um, you just need to import map class and then map component will allow you to display location of your store. Here they display the map of Sydney. So I think if you change the latitude and latitude, you can display any location you want. Okay, so I think now it's clear more what the API is and we're ready to dive into our first ABI example. Okay, so this is an example of ABI NIS2 processor manual. And this ABI describes how data is arranged in the memory, behavior and the structure of the stack and function calling conventions as well. Let's look into different sections of this API. The data type sections show details on various data types and their sizes, the sizes and bytes. Um, let's move to a section about the register uses and it lists all the registers and their roles in managing return values and arguments. And now I want to look at the dwarf section, like why the dwarf section. For a section is a debugging with attributed record formats is a debugging file format used for debugging information. And the section, I'll explain it to you why I wanted to look at the section. The section says that registers are zero through R31 assigned for debugging. Okay, so remember that information. And now we can look ABI manual for ARM processor and we can go into the same dwarf section um, in another manual for ARM processor to compare two manuals. Uh, looks like this dwarf register names are described in section four. Okay, so let's take a look. So if you notice a difference R maybe I uses a wide array of registers from general purpose to specialized VFP and neon registers compared to x86 that uses a simpler range of general purpose registers. Okay, so if you're still not sure why you should care about ABI, imagine you're developing a software application that you want to run on both Windows PC with an Intel processor that has x86 architecture and a smartphone with an ARM processor. The x86 API might use certain registers for passing arguments to functions, while the ARM API might use completely different registers. System calls are also handled differently between x86 and ARM architectures. To design a program that can run on both uh, architectures, x86 and ARM, you need to consider several strategies, probably more than I can list right now, to ensure compatibility. For example, you might need to use inline assembly code that correctly maps to the respective registers. You might also need to think of uh, libraries you want to use, maybe go for libraries and frameworks that design for cross platforms. Um, you might need to use conditional statements to make sure your program compiles um, based on the target architecture. So it's important to be familiar with ABI because ABI defines what register they use, how system calls are made, and how the operating system responds. It's all specific to each architecture. Now let's look at this ISA manual for Intel 64 processor. It looks like this specific volume focuses on the instruction set and upcode structures. Chapter 2 outlines instruction format, 
Then there are several chapters about instruction sets. Let's look at the chapter 3. It gives us an instruction format again and it says the following. The following is an example of the format used for each instruction description in this chapter. If you scroll down, let's scroll down, I find the register codes table. Let's check out one of the instructions. I want to see ADC or add with care instruction. Let's read the description here. It adds the destination operand, the source operand, and the carry flag, and it stores the result in the destination operand. The destination operand can be a register or a memory allocation. And now let's look at the ARM ISA to see if we can find the difference between ARM and x86 ISA. Okay, so let's try to find uh, again ADC instruction in here and let's check out the description. Okay, here it is, add with care. Okay, so we can see right away this instruction adds two register adds two register values and the carry flag value and writes the result to the destination register. So you can see how it's different. One is writing only to the registers, but another one can write to the registers and the memory location. And I'm sure if we looked even further, we'll be able to find other differences. But you get the idea, right? We don't need to look more at the manuals. You probably also notices that the difference between ABI and ISA are huge. The ISA manual for Intel dives deep into the processor's instruction set and hardware interactions, while the ABI manual lays down the rules for software to align with the system. So things like data layout and how functions operate to ensure software flows seamlessly, seamlessly <laughs> across different setups. Okay, I hope my video helped shed some light on this complex concepts and clear things up for you. Thanks for joining me on this tech adventure. And if you love this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Got any questions for me or topics you'd like me to cover? If you want me to show you more manuals, yes, I'm going to do that for you. Just drop this down in the comment below. And until next time, take it, keep coding. Bye-bye.